Let me first put a shout out right now, if I could, for www.noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. You know, Noble Gold CEO Colin Plume thinks that quantitative tightening is setting up the stage for a gold rally. And in his interview with the National Desk, Colin Plume said that the tightening is pushing the dollar up. However, he predicts that by next year, the Fed will print money again to restart the economic activities. If you're thinking of gold and silver right now, good time to do it. Noble Gold is giving a free gold American Eagle coin with every eligible IRA or 401k rollover in this month of September. You can't go wrong with noblegoldinvestments.com. Pick up the phone Tuesday morning at 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And find out about your financial planning. Let Noble Gold help you. And tell them that Pastor Paul Begley sent you there. All right, let's go over to North Korea, where North Korea is launching more missiles as the U.S. redeploys a carrier. North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles toward its eastern waters on Thursday after the United States redeployed an aircraft carrier near the Korean Peninsula in response to Pyongyang's previous launch of a nuclear-capable missile over Japan. The latest missile launches suggest North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is determined to continue with weapons tests aimed at boosting his nuclear arsenal in defiance of international sanctions. Many experts say Kim's goal is to eventually win U.S. recognition as a legitimate nuclear state and the lifting of those sanctions, though the international community has shown no sign of allowing that to happen. The latest missiles were launched 22 minutes apart from the North's capital region and landed between the Korean Peninsula and Japan, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said in a statement. Okay, in continuing with the coverage of the Ukrainian war, Ukraine vows to continue counteroffensive despite Russia's mobilization and annexation of the territory. Russian President Vladimir Putin's annexation of Ukrainian regions and his mass mobilization of reservists won't stop Ukrainian forces from continuing their counteroffensive against Russian forces, senior Ukrainian officials told ABC News. Putin, back on October the 4th, signed into law the annexation for the four Ukrainian territories after the referendums conducted last week in the areas of Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics, which were formed back in 2014, and parts of the southern Zaporizhia and Kyrgyzstan Oblasts, which have been occupied by Russia since February 24th. The referendum results announced by the Russian-installed authorities alleged that 90% of the voters in each region supported separation from Ukraine and joining Russia. Uganda's president is sorry for his son's threat to invade Kenya. Uganda's president Museveni has asked Kenyans for forgiveness after his son, who is also a senior military officer, tweeted about invading their country. His apology came a day after he sacked his son as commander of the army's land forces, but President Museveni softened the blow by promoting him to the rank of general and retaining him as his advisor. President Museveni has long been suspected of grooming his 48-year-old son to succeed him when he eventually steps down. Museveni's son has increasingly been entering the political arena with its critics saying he was in breach of the military's code of discipline. His latest intervention came on Monday when he sent out a series of tweets, some serious, some in jest, about the country of Kenya. Okay, this is an update covering the story out of the bombing that happened outside of Moscow a few months back. The U.S. believes elements within the Ukrainian government authorized the assassination near Moscow, according to sources. The United States intelligence community believes that the car bombing that killed Darya Dugin, the daughter of prominent Russian political figure Alexander Dugin, was authorized by elements within the Ukrainian government, sources briefed on the intelligence told CNN. The United States was not aware of the plan beforehand, according to the sources, 
and it is still unclear who exactly the United States believes signed off on the assassination. It is also not clear whether the United States intelligence community believes that Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky was aware of the plot or authorized it, but the intelligence finding first reported by the New York Times would seem to corroborate elements of the Russian authorities' findings that the car bombing was, quote, pre-planned. Russia had accused Ukrainian nationals of being responsible for the attack, which Ukraine had strongly denied in the aftermath of the explosion. The U.S. Navy's latest and most advanced aircraft carrier has deployed for the first time. The U.S. Navy's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier left on its first deployment on Tuesday from Norfolk, Virginia, designed to put the ship through its paces and exercise with allies in North America and Europe. The USS Gerald Ford is the first new aircraft carrier designed in over 40 years, according to the U.S. Navy. The carrier's construction formally began in November of 2009, and it was commissioned in 2017 by former President Donald Trump, according to a U.S. Navy release. The ship is the first Ford-class aircraft carrier. The Navy has begun construction on the next two Ford-class carriers, the USS Kennedy and the USS Enterprise. The aircraft carrier has new advanced technology, including nearly three times the amount of electrical power compared to the Nimitz-class carriers and also uses the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, according to the Navy. 